Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Talking Dental Innovation. My name is Justin Lang. I want to welcome my customers in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. So for today's video, we'll talk about uh, infection control. So tips and tricks to help you build your um, your personal infection control protocol. So just a quick note, this is not your uh, uh, provincial uh, guidelines. This is just tips and tricks to really help you out with your, um, with your maintenance and with your protocols uh, for your infection control. So, uh, so today we'll talk about responsibility, equipment maintenance and performance, uh, you know, what types of dis different sterilizers there are in the market, uh, transportation, instrument cassettes. So basically the advantage of going with cassettes, um, protecting, covering and disinfecting, uh, sterilization protocols. So, uh, the process when you're, uh, sterilizing, um, and water line maintenance. So we won't talk about BI testing today or handpiece maintenance. We'll talk about it another day. So, um, so first things first, responsibility. So whose responsibility is it in the dental practice? Well, first off, it starts from the owner. So most of the time, the dentist, he needs to make sure or she needs to make sure that the protocol is in place. So there's a protocol built inside that clinic and then everybody has a chance to see it and follow it. Uh, it's also very important that the protocol is very easy to access. If there's any new staff that comes on board, it's going to be very easy to, uh, for that person to uh, see the protocol. So every clinic should have pretty much the same protocol because the guidelines are the same throughout every province. So you know, throughout the specific province, I should say. Uh, but of course, every clinic is a little different. So uh, it's very important to make sure that everybody is following the proper protocol. And it's also good to maybe uh, dedicate one person inside that clinic, uh, you know, for guidance, for a guide um, to make sure that everybody's following that specific protocol. But everybody has their um, their job to do and if somebody is, is lacking behind in, in following the protocols it will affect everybody in the clinic. So, uh, so let's talk about equipment maintenance. So make sure that all your um, that you maintain and clean and inspect your equipment regularly. If your equipment is not working right it will affect the performance and it will affect your um, your protocol and the way that your, um, your sterilization um, procedures are being dealt with as well. You know, always use the right type of water that's recommended inside every type of equipment. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but basically every type of water. When I mean type, I mean the amount of minerals that's inside that water. Um, you know, for example, a sterilizer uh, it needs a specific uh, amount of minerals. If it's too pure, you might even get... A, uh, a warning from your sterilizer saying that there's something wrong. So inside the sterilizer, you do need a little bit of minerals to make sure that that uh, machine is operating properly. Uh, for those that have a statum, it's very important that you use it properly. A statum is not made to be overworked. It's not a, a big machine uh, for it to be uh, used and loaded up to, to the brim every single time. A statum is made to be used as uh, you know mainly uh, to flash instruments so if you need to sterilize it on bag very quickly uh, of course you can use it in uh, in a bagging cycle but it will you know take a little bit more time so um, if you're using your sterilizer or your statum more than a thousand cycles per year uh, which is that's what it's made for to, no not more than a thousand cycles maybe it's time to look in at redistributing your instruments to different sterilizers or adding on another sterilizer inside your uh, your protocol uh, so different sterilizers. Uh, so of course, there's many different units uh, on the market. They work well, all of them, but they're all a little different. So you have your class B sterilizers and then your gravity sterilizers. So your class B, you're looking at a uh, Cycan Bravo or a, st uh, a Statclave, and then you're looking at Minmark uh, M11 or your Lexa or your Tottenauer. Uh, on the gravity sterilizer. So the main difference, your class B, if you look at it, it's your uh, your Mercedes. It's very, I uh, know it's fast, it's fancy, he does many great things. And your, uh, your uh, 
uh, gravity sterilizer, gray sterilizer, we'll talk about like a Toyota Camry. Uh, it's not, it's less expensive, but it, it's very efficient. It works really well and it's not complicated. It's really reliable. Not saying that the Class B is not reliable, uh, but it has more moving parts. So your Class B has a, um, uh, it has a pump that removes the air inside. So the steam has a better chance of penetrating everywhere. So a Class B is amazing for everything that's, you know, implantable devices, uh, for your nitrous tubings and everything. And it is faster. It is a great sterilizer. Uh, for your um, for your gravity, like I said, it's simpler. It comes in a, you know, a big size and uh, uh, you know it's a little slower, but you're gonna pay less money. So both options are very, very good, uh, but they do offer very specific advantages to both. Uh, if there's any questions, you can always ask me and we can go through it. Um, so we'll you know, start off talking about transportation. So right now there's a big uh, discussion inside the you know infection control procedure about transportation about tubs some regulations are requiring to have tubs like in ontario and alberta um, so basically every time you're transporting your instruments from the um, sterilization area to the op and the op back to the sterilization area they need to be closed off in a tub it's very recommended uh, but many uh, provinces are not uh, requiring it so um, you know, to be as safe as possible, um, to have a shut off, you no, know, a closed off lockable container for transplantation, it is, uh, you know, the best way to do it. But if you don't, uh, you know, try to be as close as possible to make sure that if anything that happens, um, you know, you won't, you know, endanger anybody. Uh, so it starts off making sure that all your sharps and uh, everything that's disposable in the garbage is being done at the, at the operatory. Uh, and then after that, uh, placing everything in your tray or in a cassette and then bring that to the, um, you know, to the sterilization area. So talking about cassettes, a few clinics do have them and some don't. Uh, you don't need cassettes, but they are different advantages of using them. Uh, and, you know, it, it is an investment. So we'll talk about just a few things, a few advantages of going through a cassette system if you ever thought of going that way. But again, you're not required to have cassettes, but it is a great tool to have in terms of organization and safety inside your clinic. So again, having cassettes advantages, it's very easy to organize uh, by procedure. So every cassette has its own procedure, have their own color usually, and uh, it's, it's great for that. So it's easy to just grab a cassette, you don't have to wait. If you'd say you're doing a procedure, you're going from, uh, you know, doing a certain procedure to an endo. Well, you just grab the endo cassette. You don't have to run and sign your, um, your um, sterilization area or your storage area and then finding all those instruments. So everything is set. Everything is very easy and packed inside one cassette. Uh, again, very safe for transportation in and out. Uh, everything is there. It's lockable. So it's very easy to transport and very safe. If you trip, something happens, somebody bumps into you, uh, you know, the, your instruments won't fly away. Everything is going to stay in that cassette. And they are pretty sturdy and they last a very, very long time. Um, so when you are going to process your instruments with uh, cassettes uh, in your sterilization area, it's very important to know that if you don't have a hydrum, which is no, the washing machine, uh, you're not taking fully advantage of the cassette system. So the advantage of the cassette is basically making sure all your instruments are very uh, cleanly wiped before you put them back after you uh, did your uh, procedure. You bring your cassette, you you rinse it quickly, um, you know, cassette closed in your, in your uh, sterilization area, and then it goes directly to the hydrum, okay? If you don't have a hydrum, but again, you have to reopen and then you have to re manipulate all your instruments. Um, so again, you do have the advantage of transportation, of organizing, but in terms of instrument manipulation, you do lose that aspect if you don't have that hydrum. Okay. Um, Again, it looks more professional uh, when, the, when the patients come in. Everything is really nice and neat on the tray. There's not instruments all over the place. Um, and uh, it's easy to organize as well when you're, you're placing it through your cassette. You, know, you can always do that on your tray as well, but it's very nice to do it beforehand. Um, and it's very, you know, very organized. So uh, again, consideration, it takes more place inside your sterilizer. Um, and it does, you know, like I said, to take full advantage, it's nice to have that, uh, that hydro. Okay. Uh, there is a cost. Now cassettes go from, you know, $150 all the way up to 300. So there is a, a major cost, a major investment, but again, it is an investment because you are being safer. Your instruments, 
uh, won't be banged around as much uh, compared to non-cassette, so you will save on your instruments on long term. Uh, it is uh, safer to make sure nobody pricks or cuts themselves when they're um, uh, sterilizing uh, their um, your instruments. So there is that big aspect as well when you are investing in cassettes. Um, and you might need to purchase more instruments. So to complete your kits, if you don't have cassettes, you can always, you know, run around and grab instruments here and there to complete a kit. With this, you do need full kits, uh, so you might have to invest. Uh, but again, you're just buying more instruments long term. You would have to buy them anyway. Uh, you would just keep more uh, instruments uh, with you. So let's move on to uh, protecting, covering and disinfecting. Uh, so always use uh, the proper level mask for protection. Uh, I know before COVID, many clinics were just using you know, a level one mask. They find that you now level three was a little bit too much. But if you look at the dedication for every mask, there's, you know, there's certain masks that go for uh, certain procedures. Of course, if you're using, uh, if you're doing a procedure with, um, uh, you know, with blood, um, a level three mask uh, is definitely, uh, you know, the right mask for this uh, but again everything is is dedicated for this if you go on the manufacturer website it will tell you exactly for which procedure goes to uh, you know is dedicated for each mask okay um, when you are you know of course when you're finishing with a patient you change all your PPE you change your gloves you change your mask um, and uh, now your gowns and everything so um, I know gloves, usually it's a no-brainer. Uh, mask, uh, you know, many are keeping their mask for a little, you know, a little longer throughout the day. So it's very important more and more now to just replace your mask and, uh, and you grab, a, I know, a fresh one for every patient. It does get, uh, you know, it, the, the mask does have a shelf life. Uh, it's, you know, made with, with different fibers and those fibers do break down. And, uh, you know, you don't get that same effect any. Uh, that same protection effect as when you grab a, a fresh mask. So it's always important to change your mask, change your, uh, well, all your PPE for every patient. So, uh, again, for me, I find that, you know, to make sure that everything is being done very properly or, or the, the infection control inside the clinic is being done uh, as quickly as possible is to make sure that your op is clutter-free as much as possible. Um, we do have you know, presentation models or, or, or products, uh, you know, frames on the walls. Um, there's so many things that, uh, that you can have uh, you know, in your ops um, you know, to help you with your procedure. But it's very important to keep as minimum as possible on the shelves. Most clinics invested a lot of money in these beautiful dental made cabinets, uh, but they're not using them. They, they just keep everything on the counters. So make sure that everything will be in the counter and trust me, after you get used to this, you will find it's so much better. Uh, it's such a less distraction. It's a lot less weight on your on your head when you're uh, working, you know, because it's very nice and clean. So it's always important to make sure that everything that is on the counter it can be stored on your uh, in your cabinets. Uh, when you start off a procedure, you're taking the minimum that you need for that procedure. Uh, and then that's what you wipe down. That's what you clean after the end of your procedure. And, and then it can be restored. Okay. Um, so things you need to wipe down. So like I said, inside your op, the least possible that you have is great. But some things you cannot throw away. So when you're, uh, when you're wiping down everything in your op with uh, either you know, a, a, a pre-moisten wipe or a dry wipe that you will moisten after. They're all great products. Um, you have to you know, make sure that you're, um, you're wiping down your chair controls, your, uh, your drawers and faucet handles, your light handles, your switches, your countertops, your x-ray machines, pens, chair side computers, you know, keyboards, monitors, telephones, doorknobs, reusable containers. These are all things that need to be wiped down. Safety glasses, but many of those things, some can be stored if you're not using them. But of course, a lot of these, you're gonna use them every day or for every procedure. Uh, bib clips as well, that's another one. 
um, if uh, some of you are interested of, of utilizing or, or um, increasing their efficiency, there is the Zerk method. It's, it's, for, it's color method from Zerk, I'm sorry. Um, it's a great, great product. It's a great system. It comes with tubs. So basically for every procedure, you have a tub, you open up your tub, you take out what you need, and then uh, you only wipe down what you have been taken out, put it back in, and you're done. So it's a very, very efficient system. It's not a really expensive way to, you know, to organize your, uh, your procedures, but it has really great long-term effects on your organization. So for your wipes, many are asking me, uh, you know, what do we do with the, the leather or our chairs? We want to keep our chairs lasting as long as possible. There were some products in the past of taking care of your chairs, taking care of the leather. And, you know, every chair, it's a very big investment and you want to make sure that it's, you know, it's going to last as much as possible. So all your wipes, basically, um, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're killing bacteria. Your wipes are not cleaners, uh, they're disinfectants. Right? So when you're using them, you will have residue that are left on your surfaces. So I always recommend, it's very important, at least once a week, take a, a spray bottle with a soap and uh, spray it down all your surfaces, your countertops, your chairs, everything that you would have used a wipe on and uh, clean it with that soap and water. That will remove the residue of those disinfectants throughout the, uh, throughout the week. So uh, some you know, might notice their, their tubings on, the, uh, uh, on your delivery units are getting sticky. Uh, spray it with wipe, trying to wipe it down. Of course, if you haven't done this for years, it's gonna be hard to take everything off, but it's a very, very good uh, way to make sure that your equipment and all your surfaces are, you know, they're, they're going to be left uh, clean for a long time. They're going to last as long as possible. So now let's go through sterilization protocols. So basically in your sterilization area. Okay. Um, so I know every clinic, some are, are brand new and some are older uh, with different designs. It's very important to make sure that you're going from left to right or right to left. Okay. Um, this is made for, you know, to not have cross contamination. So this is, you know, I find it's non-negotiable. Uh, you know, you're going from one side to the other. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will have some uh, some flow issues, some management issues, and of course, some some you know sterilization issues. So every time you come in, you make sure that you are processing your instruments right away. If you can't, not a problem. Make sure that they're stored in the upper cabinet or in a you know a storing area. So make sure everything is is being um, is being cleared or is being free for the next person, okay? But if you can do it right away, you know, perfect. If you're a big clinic that you have a sterilization person uh, that does this, you know, full time, um, you know, fantastic, okay? So when you go in, you discard all your rubbish. If you haven't in your ops, which I still recommend, but if you haven't, this is, you know, this is the time to do it. Uh, you know, if you're using cassette, just simply rinse the cassette uh, and then place it in the hydrum. If you know that you're, um, your hygiene, it's not going to fill up very quickly. Um, and if you haven't uh, you know, wiped down your instruments properly inside your op, you might have some, um, you might have some residue that is going to dry on your instruments, which is very, very hard to take off even with the hydrum. So it's very important to make sure that you're wiping down all those little instruments, the composite instruments, they're all being wiped down at the op. So it's going to give you less, um, uh, less of a job after uh, to you know to scrape down those instruments. Uh, there's different sprays as well that uh, you can spray uh, your cassettes or your instruments to make sure that it's you know it's not going to dry on you. Um, uh, you. When you're placing your instruments in your ultrasonic, so this is a big thing that I think most clinics uh, could improve. Um, they, they place their instruments inside the ultrasonic. They're overloading their ultrasonic unit. Or randomly, they'll, they'll put the machine on, they figure out a piece, they, you know, open up the cover, throw the instrument inside. They have no idea what instrument inside that ultrasonic unit has been agitating for, you know, five minutes, ten minutes. Uh, we don't know. And the biggest thing, and I can't stress, stress this enough, when you're opening that cover and that machine is agitating, um, you're, you're basically spreading everything aerosol-wise 12 uh, feet uh, radius around that room. So we're talking about aerosols, uh, you know, in a big way in the last year because of COVID. 
This is so important. So basically everything that you have placed in there is uh, you know, full of bacteria. It hasn't been um, you know, sterilized yet. Never, ever, 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 ever open up a top of a, of a um, ultrasonic machine uh, before closing it. It's, it's very dangerous. Like I said, you're spreading all the bacteria, all the solutions everywhere. So make sure that you are um, uh, taking the prop proper protocol with your instruments. You put a, you know, a batch in to make sure they're not overloaded. You let that run for that specific amount um, and then you remove it put another batch in for that specific time. If you forgot an instrument, well, wait to the next batch. It's, this is very, very, very important. After you're all done, you rinse your instruments properly. I'll tell you a little later why that's so important, but trying to rinse your instruments under the water for a good 45 seconds, making sure all that solution is being rinsed off your instruments. So this is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, when you are finished, you will dry your instruments. There is a product called Hot Towel, H-E-C-K. Uh, you can get through Amazon. They sell them a little bit everywhere. It's a lint-free towel. It's very good. They're not expensive. Um, you can keep a few with you. And this is a great way to dry. And it's so important as well to dry um, your instruments. Again, this is, uh, this is key sometimes when you are sterilizing to not get uh, your you know, wet bags. Okay. Um, so when you, you know, you can, um, right now everybody needs to bag their instruments, you know, your bag, uh, or you're going to wrap your cassettes. So this is the time after, okay. And then you can also do a little bit of inspection just to make sure that, you know, before you wrap everything up is to make sure everything is good because you don't want a surprise when you start using the instruments. This is a good time to inspect them. Um, so when you place your instruments inside that sterilizer, it's very important to make sure that the full cycle is being done. If it's not done, it might be sterile, but it's not dry. And if it's not dry, a package that's coming out of the sterilizer that's wet, it is no longer considered sterile, which means that, um, so what happens basically is if there is not a dry package, it's wet, that, you know, the, the wet surface, um, uh, acts like a wick so basically all everything that's outside sticks to that uh, wet uh, spot and then goes inside uh, the package which you know makes it no longer sterile so if you have a sterile bag or if you are uh, finishing your cycle and your bags or your cassettes are um, they're wet or there's wet spots that there is an issue we need to fix so we'll talk about all the different things as well later on of why that might be uh, as well, uh, right before you place inside your sterilizer, um, you know, every, right now there's a lot of products on the market for monitoring. Um, you know, we need to know exactly what's going on with every package. We need to know um, when this package has been sterile, by who, uh, what's inside. Uh, it's, you know, obviously it's, 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 a, it's a lot to do. Uh, there's, you know, products out there to help you out. Right now in New Brunswick, you don't need to do that, but there is steps that you can take that will, you know, help you uh, with, let's say, a recall of instruments. If it, anything happens to, um, in the clinic that you need to recall packages, it's not a bad idea to stamp your packages with a uh, just a date stamp with a, a specific color for your sterilizer. Um, and, you know, when you're you're doing your procedure, uh, you can write down, you know, the information on that patient chart. So if anything happens, uh, again, this is not required by your guidelines, but it's a little extra step that you can take. So um, it's, it's not a it doesn't take a lot of time. You just stamp it and then you're done. OK. Um, if ever that you are instead of going through that next step of really fully monitoring your packages, uh, there is a, a few companies out there that offer these services. And if you have any questions, you can always let me know. We can, you know, talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the different options. So if you ever have to write down on a package, um, make sure that you write down on plastic on the window, not on the paper. Again, the paper will make it bleed. Uh, if you want to write on as well, when you're folding, there's a little piece of paper in there as well, but it's not inside the bag itself. Uh, that's a good place as well. Same place you would stamp your um, your um, your dates um, for monitoring. So if ever that you have an issue, you have wet bags or something happens, or you know you have a positive BI test, which is horrible. If you have positive BI tests, which means that there is 
um, an issue with your sterilizer it hasn't sterilized yet. So here are a few um, items that you can look into. It's kind of a quick checklist uh, to make sure that you know everything is being done well through your sterilization uh, procedure. So um, if your instruments were wet before going inside the bag, you will probably have wet instruments coming out. So basically these sterilizers are a very sophisticated machine. They want to run as fast as, as possible. So they use steam, they shoot steam inside and steam is what, um, it is what sterilizes the instruments. If you're introducing extra water inside that chamber, well, the steam uh, will, you know, the steam that's being introduced will, that's the only one that will be uh, dried off when, when the sterilizer is doing this drying cycle. Everything extra will basically stay there. So make sure your instruments are super, 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 super dry when they are uh, going inside those bags. Okay. If you overload your bags, again, that's uh, that's a no no. Um, the paper, uh, it's it's always paper side down. So basically, yeah, I always say if you can see your instruments with the window, you have it, you know, you have it the right way. Um, the sterilizer was overloaded. You know, you you crammed too many things in there. The steam didn't have a chance to go everywhere. Um, you need to re you know redistribute your your instruments, or you need to add on a, another sterilizer inside your uh, your clinic. Uh, there's a gasket problem. These gaskets need to be changed once in a while, so that could be a, a problem. The drying cycle wasn't completed. You know, again, uh, an issue with the sterilizer. Um, issue with the door spring. So some, let's say an M11, the door spring opens up, so the door opens up to, to let the steam out. Um, again, it's very model specific, but if there's an issue with that door spring that it doesn't open the right time or the right distance, that could be an issue. And these are all very you know simple things to, to fix. Um, issue with cassette design. So there's a few. I won't name any. I won't name any manufacturing manufacturers, but there's a few uh, cassette systems. There's a few designs on the market um, that they, I don't just don't find they play friendly with uh, wraps. Uh, you need to wrap your cassettes. You need to wrap your bags. So um, some of these cassettes um, they're not designed with a lot of room for water to. Uh, come out. Um, so, you know, before investing in in a system, make sure that you are discussing it with, uh, you know, the, the manufacturing uh, or, you know, better yet, your uh, distributor rep to make sure that you're purchasing the right one. Because after you bought them, you bought them, right? So, um, you've chosen the wrong sterilization program. That's a big one as well. Make sure that you're, you're choosing the right program for what's inside your, your sterilizer. Um, their, their machine is not lean. Again, this is model specific, but some models need to lean, uh, lean the instruments a certain way. They cannot be flat. So just to make sure that that is being done properly. Uh, your staff is not following protocol. Again, it comes into the protocol um, that, you, that you will have in place to make sure that everybody has access to that. Um, very, very important. Uh, clog filter. These filters need to be changed regularly. Again, maintenance of your equipment. Um, the maintenance not being followed. Cleaning everything of your uh, your equipment is might not being done properly. Um, so it's very important. Uh, instruments not rinse well. So again, we're talking about ultrasonic cleaners. If it, it's not rinse well, what might happen? So if you see your bags are coming out and they have these burnt spots and you might think, oh my God, my sterilizer is burning my, my bags or my, my cassettes. Um, it's not burnt. The, the sterilizer doesn't go hot enough to actually burn your sterile, your cassettes or your wrap. Um, but what it is though is a chemical reaction. So that heat from the sterilizer makes a chemical reaction um, with those um, uh, with the ultrasonic cleaner solution. Uh, so if you see that right there, it's an indication you're not rinsing your instruments well enough. Um, so the, the cassettes, uh, when you put them inside, there's different racks that you need to be utilizing. So making sure that you're using your racks correctly. Um, as the ones that have uh, statums, let's say the statum 5000, there's different plates that uh, comes with your machine for free. Uh, a lot of them that they install the machine, they put their plates somewhere, they hit them somewhere, and they never been used before. So if you have a statum 5000, take out those plates again, line them up, and it's so easy to put in your, um, your instruments. It's... Uh, it's going to work. You're going to fit a lot more and you're going to make sure that everything is being sterilized properly. Um, when you're using a cassette, make sure it's always wrapped. It's never bagged. So never bag cassettes. It's made to be wrapped. 
Um, so fragile instruments, uh, you know, should be placed in the tray. Just make sure that they're not loosed anywhere inside the uh, in the the sterilizer. Um, you might as you might also when you're placing your your cassettes in or your tray your um, your racks, uh, there's a probe at the end of those sterilizer. You might have bent that probe. You might have hit that probe. So make sure that you inspect that. If there's any issue, that could be one of them. Um, and it could be a, a leak in the chamber. So there's a test that you can do on every sterilizer to make sure them, that, that there is a, uh, uh, you know, the pressure test to make sure that it's very well done, especially on the class B sterilizers like the Bravo and the Stag Life. All right, that was a lot. <laughs> if uh, you have any questions, you can definitely let me know for all the, all the, you know, the issues with the sterilizer why it's not working well but the list i gave you if you go on that step by step you know 99 percent of the time it's going to be one of those situations um as well it could be an electricity uh issue um uh, right now a lot of our sterilizers that we put in or when we having issues uh, we install a call a buck and boost it just equalizes electricity uh, especially in an area that has a lot of construction in different uh um, you know, maybe a street over from where you are, the, you can have a spike or a plunge in, in power. So a buck and boost could be a, you know, a good situation or a good uh, uh, fix for that. So we'll finish off with water lines. Water lines are incredibly important to make sure that this is being done properly because everything sits in there. You're, you're basically, you know, soaking up all those bacterias and we need to make sure that they're being taken care of very, very well. So all the water lines need to be um, you know, treated every day. You can use a product like PureVac SC. It's uh, those buckets that you can get when you put your lines into. Very, very, very simple uh, product to use because it has different levels. So every time you use for a tubing, um, it goes down the level. So you make sure that you're sucking in as you know, the perfect amount of solution. Also, Never leave your tubings dry. When you suck in those solution, that solution, you make sure that it's being stayed in there. You never purge it out, okay? Um, when you start using your instruments in the, in the morning, make sure that your instruments are being uh, purged out, though all your instruments, your, um, your uh, handpiece tubings with no handpieces uh, being purged out for, um, you know, for a little while, for, uh, you know, for maybe 30, 40 seconds, just to make sure that uh, everything is being flushed out. You never know, especially we've seen after COVID, um, you know, clinics reopened again and we got, you know, a few calls of, of, you know, goop and gunk coming out of those tubings, which is normal. I mean, stuff grows in there. That's why it's so important to treat, treat these, uh, these tubings. Um, if you're not sure if there's an issue with, you know, what's inside your, your, uh, your lines, uh, you know, you, you might, you might have a smell or maybe you're, you're, you've seen something coming out and you're like, you know what? How can I be, you know, sure that my lines are good? Um, you can do tests. There, there's test kits you can buy. They have 12 uh, tests in there. You don't have to send it to a lab. You can do it in house, and it's it's very important to do this once in a while. And if there's an issue, and you, know, you can shock your lines, uh, we have products for that as well. So it's very easy to do, and uh, it's not a bad idea to do it once in a while just to make sure that your lines are going to be, um, you know, clean as much as possible. But you don't know if a line is good until you test it. It's it's impossible to know. So if you can test your lines once in a while, um, you know, you'll be you'll be sure that it's going to. Uh, it's going to be safe for you and your uh, and your patients. So so that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, a long video today, but if you want any more uh, details about anything that um, I've talked about, again, uh, this is this, these are tips and tricks. Okay, this is from me, Justin Lang. This is not um, uh, you know this is not from uh, NB Dental. These are tips and tricks to help you out. Um, you know that if you want to choose to follow. Um, but if you have any questions to make sure that, you know, you, you maintain your equipment properly, if there's any type of protocols that you would like to follow, that you need assistance, please reach out to me by phone or email anytime. And I'll be, you know, it's going to be my pleasure to help you out. So this is a very important um, um, aspect of day-to-day of -day operations inside a clinic. Uh, you want to make sure that your patients and staff feel you know, incredibly secure uh, more than ever. I find even before COVID, um, most clinics, I mean, you know, I would say every clinic has the right heart. They want to make sure that everything is being done properly to offer. Uh, and because of this, even after COVID, now we can stay open even if uh, we're in the red area or the red zone. Uh, so again, stay safe. Uh, you know, thanks for... Uh, 
your time and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.